5.5 is all about finding those people who are making a difference to their communities. And our latest story has brought us to a tiny little town called Chan Chan Primero in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Estoy eh, apicultor desde como 25 años eh, me, porque soy enamorado de la naturaleza y de las abejas. Eh, eso es una, una pasión. Eh, cuando llegué aquí, aquí en, en el Caribe mexicano, en la península de Yucatán, descubrí una nueva especie de, de abejas que se llama la, la abeja melipona, eh, que, que es una abeja que no tiene aguijón, que no tiene veneno, que no tiene agresividad y que produce miel. Eh, eh, por supuesto que participa a la, a la, al desarrollo de la, y a la polinización de, de, la, de la selva de aquí. Los mayas eh, desde miles de años criaron este, este abejas, porque es la abeja nativa de las tierras de América, de, de, de la zona tropical. Pero eh, de los, en los 20 últimos años perdimos 80% de las colmenas, por varias, varias razones. Nuestro proyecto, lo que estamos haciendo ahorita, es tratar de rescatar este abejas de, 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 con nuevos métodos de crianza en caja eh, para poder dividir eh, eh, y multiplicar las colmenas y después distribuirlas con una capacitación a las comunidades maya para que las comunidades maya retoman este papel, esta herencia cultural que tiene en la crianza de las melíponas y que, empezan, que, que hay un, como un renacimiento de la, de la, de, del cultivo de la melipona. For the Mayans of this area, it used to be typical to have one or two beehives outside their house. Now this is an example of one. So what the bees do is they choose a dry part of a living tree and they make their nest inside. And when they spot one, they'll cut it from each side, fill the ends with clay and bring it here. Now this one is very old. It's got a cross on the front, which actually just shows which way is up, so which way the beehive should be. It'll be hard for you to see, but there's always a little guard bee in the entranceway. If another bee comes, he just gets straight out of the way, they pop in and he's back out there again, ooh, like that. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. And, and, and once or twice a year, approximately every six months, um, they'll open it up, collect the honey, and then close it again, and then the bees carry on. We're here at the house of the medicine woman. And around every house is what's called Mayan solar. And it's a space in which they grow their food and their medicine, in fact, everything they need to survive. So we're talking a beehive in every house for honey, plenty of trees, fruit trees, uh, all the vegetables that you might need, um, a little medicine patch, which we have here behind, and chickens, pigs, and whatever else you need to survive. It's all about creating complete sustainability. Here we have hundreds of plants that have been planted specifically for their medicinal purposes. And some of them I recognize, many of them I didn't. Um, amazing to see the depth of knowledge about each one and, and what its uses are for. Everything from kids with sick tummies, uh, diarrhea, asthma, nervous kids, cataracts, the list just goes on and on and on. And in some areas they're all named. This is a teaching area as well, so um, the intention is to pass on the knowledge. It, all the women in the local village have this knowledge now, and it's a really cool thing. El sucot es la semilla, el que se abre dentro de la boca del niño. Porque a veces hay niños que no hablan. Si sí, esto, si la semilla le abre dentro de la boca es para que el niño hable. Que si tienes dolor de estómago, Le haces el té y lo tomas. Que este son para los granos. Le decimos tamay. Sí, son para los granos también. Que se da en la piel. Sí. This is an example of traditional Mayan techniques still in use today. So this is a planting box that is planted several feet off the ground so that animals can't reach it. And here we have growing lettuce and it looks pretty delicious. I'm working with uh, these uh, ladies in agreement that if they do the composta, if they rescue the land, mm -hmm, so I can give her some seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if they are working the canche, that it's uh, the high bed of, of uh, land, mm -hmm. so I can give you more capacitation, more information, more seeds. 
<laughs> if you make your work, I can be with you, yeah. mm -hmm. working together. Mm -hmm. But the decisions are uh, taken by, by them. If the people from the cities will know them mm -hmm. and her heart mm -hmm. and the important uh, part of the culture that they represent, they mm. have a work, they could have work, they could sell uh, their products uh, well, mm -hmm. but people from the cities uh, is not uh, very open. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the beginning mm -hmm. and sometimes because we are going to a green world, mm -hmm. that's the important part that is pushing mm -hmm. people to change. Mm -hmm. But uh, some parts of the city, uh, unfortunately, uh, believe that the Mayans are people that has no culture. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the five more important cultures of the world. Mm -hmm.